So in today's video, we are going to be breeding my gold laser quarries. I haven't really made a lot of videos on this channel breeding Corydoras. I thought what better an opportunity than to do my gold lasers because I have bred quite a few different types of quarries in the past. Nothing too extensive and nothing too crazy. I've bred the pandas, the similis, sturbis, albinos, julii's and things like that. But these guys are probably the coolest looking ones that I've ever bred. I've only just recently started actually getting these guys to successfully breed and I've learned quite a few things with doing it. So I'm just going to take you through the process of breeding them. It's really, really easy and I used to think they were quite difficult to breed but up until recently I changed a few things and I learned so much. I'm just going to share that completely with you guys. So what we have in here is a colony of I think 10 adult gold laser quarries. There might be more than that. I think there's slightly more males and females in here. Probably five to six males and then four to five females. I don't think that matters too much with these guys. The main thing with Corydoras is trying to figure out what the triggers are. Triggering these guys is pretty straightforward and it used to be so much more complicated, like I made it so complicated. But the main thing is temperature. So these guys are just in my tap water, the pH is like 7.2, the hardness is just community hardness, so like 50 to 100 parts per million. Nothing too crazy, it doesn't need to be rainwater or anything like that surprisingly, because these guys are part of the Aeneas family which is basically the albinos, which makes them very easy to breed. It actually makes the eggs really easy to hatch as well. To breed these guys, you're gonna need an adult colony. These are about a year and a half old. You probably only need them to be about eight months old and they'll start breeding. And you're gonna to wanna to keep them at a temperature of about 21 to 24 degrees Celsius. Higher than this, I haven't found they breed very well. That's just from my observation. Maybe other people haven't breed at that temperature, but I haven't. The cooler I've gotten it, the better results I've had. So they're at about 21 degrees Celsius in here. As you can see in this tank, I have a ton of this Anubius. So all the Anubius that I have in my fish room is growing in here. The reason I have this is because they love to spawn on it. You can see I've kept the tank bare bottom. I've got some pieces of gold vine. I've also got up the back a water pump. This is just creating lots of flow in the tank. And that's also really important. So there's a sponge filter up the back, the water pump up here that's creating flow lots of Anubius and some overall cover. I know it doesn't seem like a lot's going on in here. These guys are very skittish and they hide up the back all the time. So that's really frustrating, but we will get better looks at them throughout this video. These guys are pretty well conditioned at the moment. To breed them, you're gonna to need to condition them. And the way you condition them is with live food. I think the thing you're gonna have the best results with is live blackworms. If you have a look here in this container, I've already separated some of these guys out, but in here I have my live blackworms. So I get these shipped in weekly, and you can get them from lots of really good local fish stores. These are pretty much the key food to getting these guys to breed. You can use like live earthworms and things like that, but these are the easiest thing for me to get. You could also use bloodworms, high protein pellets might work as well, but the live food seems to stimulate them the most. So we're gonna add this whole entire amount into the tank. And I've been adding this amount of live blackworms once every two days. You can see just how much food we're gonna use to try and spawn these guys and they're probably not going to come out until I disappear but the adults are going to come out and eat on this and fill up with protein and start to develop some eggs. I actually want these guys to spawn tomorrow and the main trigger for them like I said earlier on is temperature. So what we're going to do is a big water change tonight, leave them overnight and they should spawn tomorrow morning and there'll be a ton of eggs within here. So we're going to use water that's about 15 degrees celsius, that'll drop the temperature a couple of degrees in the tank and that'll mimic a rainfall and that just really gets these guys going. What I'm gonna do is go ahead and grab my hose. I'll just put this in here. I'll add a little bit of dechlorinator. I'm just gonna absolutely blast it. I'm probably gonna change about 30% of the water in here to really try and drop that temperature as much as I can. You can see just the amount of flow that I've got going on in here. It's not gonna distress the adults, don't worry about it. They're very, very hardy fish and this is part of their breeding. So if it works for breeding, it shouldn't distress them too much. But I'm just gonna leave this go for a couple of minutes and then turn it off and I guess we'll come back in the morning and see if we've got some eggs. The main takeaway bits for this is firstly get a good colony with adult fish. Feed them up heavily on live blackworms or bloodworms. I'd highly recommend just do live blackworms. And then a nice big cold water change to drop the temperature and to stimulate them to spawn and you should get some eggs. So hopefully we get some eggs tomorrow. So I came back the next morning and I had a look inside of our gold laser quarry tank and there was a lot of action going on and I actually caught these guys spawning. 
When these guys spawn, it is quite frantic and there's fish kind of running everywhere throughout the tank. So it's really interesting to see this because most of the time they're really shy and it's hard to record them. So it's weird that you'd see a fish when they're spawning. But anyways, they felt comfortable enough to spawn and obviously that water change did trigger this. And also that increased flow. So they think there's been a rain and the females are all plump full of eggs and they're ready to go. The way these guys spawn is males will go crazy running around chasing the females trying to induce them to spawn. They then form what we call a T-pose where the female kind of gets in towards the male's side and forms a T. I think this is where she gets the sperm and then uses this for the eggs that she lays. So she'll be running around with the eggs looking for somewhere to put them. So you can see she'll go and put them somewhere like this leaf or up along the sides of the glass or wherever she feels like. Most of the time I find it somewhere where the flow is pointing. So wherever you want the eggs to be laid, try and point some kind of flow at it. But this is really unpredictable. I mean, they could just lay eggs wherever they want. This spawning continued for about six to seven hours. It was quite a long spawn. There was lots of eggs. I was really, really happy to see it because these are probably one of my favorite types of quarries and probably one of my favorite to spawn. They are pretty easy. So I left them for the day and I came back in the afternoon and this is when I collected the eggs. So to collect these eggs, I use a breeder box. So it's a hang on breeder box. It uses an air uplift tube to pump water into the box and then it overflows on the other side of the box. So it's really good, it recirculates water and it's really, really good for raising cori fry in my opinion. For hatching these eggs out, we're not gonna be using that function. So what I do is I just set the box up, I put some water in there and I don't connect it up to the tank just yet because I wanna put some methylene blue in there. I then go around the tank and collect the eggs. When collecting these eggs, you don't have to be too gentle. They are quite sturdy and anything that's kind of a little bit gentle, like if you damage an egg, it probably wasn't fertilized anyways. We're looking for eggs that still kind of have some transparency in them that aren't white. Opaque white eggs are most of the time infertile and are just going to cause fungus and rotting inside of your hatching containers. So go around, collect all the eggs. Sometimes you can use a credit card to scrape them off the sides. They are very, very sticky, but they are quite easy to take off the sides. This is my favorite way to do it. So I go around, I collect out all the eggs. I got so many eggs in this spawn, probably close to about 100 and I put them inside of the breeder box. What I then do is add some air into the box so there's like constantly oxygen in there. Otherwise the eggs will rot because they need oxygen to stay alive. So the oxygen is really important. So just the easy way to do this is add an air stone. And then I add a couple of drops of methylene blue to help fungus from forming on these eggs. And this is definitely essential. Otherwise any eggs that aren't fertilized are just gonna rot and form fungus. So this methylene blue does help a lot. I then left these eggs for a couple of days and I came back and they'd started to hatch. So when this had happened, I then take the air stone out of the box and connect the box up to the aquarium so it starts getting some fresh water through it. This is really important because if you don't do this, the water will foul because the rotten eggs kind of like take over a little bit. So it's really important you do this just as the eggs are about to hatch or as they're hatching, connect them up to the original tank's water and it works perfectly. You can see here, there's a couple of little fries swimming around. On that first day, they don't need any food or anything. You just let them develop until that yolk sacs absorbed. I came back a few days after that and they'd really started to develop. On this day, I started to feed them. Now to feed these little guys, I used to mess around with some small foods like powders and microworms and things like that. But in recent times for these quarries, this might not work for other different types. So you'll have to do your own research if you're breeding a different type. But for these gold lasers, all you really need is baby brine shrimp. So I feed these guys baby brine shrimp twice a day, once in the morning and once in the afternoon and they absolutely loved it. So this baby brine shrimp, what it does is it eventually settles down in like a corner in the box. So you have to spread it out a little bit to make sure everyone gets a feed, but it'll go down to the bottom of the box and the little cores will jump on top of it and eat it. And it's really, really good for their growth. It's got lots of protein and it really helps their development a lot. And I came back a few days later and you can see that they really have developed. They form this little like black stripe on their face, which is kind of cool. This obviously disappears as they get older. This is when they start to get a little bit bigger and I leave them in the box for however long I kind of feel. Normally this ends up being about a week and a half and they're kind of big enough to go into a tank. You don't want to add them to a tank too soon because otherwise they'll find it too hard to find food. Cory fry are kind of like a little bit of a more difficult fry to take care of in regards to some other things. It did take me quite a few batches of losing them to figure out how to actually properly do this but I've gotten pretty good at it now and it's not too hard now. So. I left them in there for about a week and a half and then it was time to add them to a grow out tank. 
So it's now been another month since I added these gold laser quarries to their grow out tank and you can see they're doing well. They actually look like little miniature versions of the adult fish, so they look really really similar to their parents. They're only about a centimeter and a half in size but they're all doing really well. They've stopped eating baby brine shrimp now and I'm just feeding them lots of little crushed up flakes, some pellets and some rapashi and all that kind of stuff and they're growing really well. They're super super cute fish, they're awesome little fish to breed and they're not tricky to breed at all. As long as you get that spawning condition right, you should have fry and they grow out and they turn into little tiny lasers swimming around your aquarium and it's really really cool. Yeah, I'm super happy with how this project went. These fry grew up well, I didn't run into any problems with them and pretty soon they'll be moved on to their new homes. So thank you so much for watching this video guys, I really do appreciate it. I hope you guys enjoyed it and I'll see you guys in the next one.